you're looking to catch your personal best this season, October is going to be the month to do it. I'm going to show you the lures that I use that consistently produce big fish for me. But as these bass enter into the fall feed, they're eating the bait fish, they're eating shad, and they are beefing up for the winter. Now, this is going to be your time to pick up an absolute donkey. And all your friends are going to be jealous when you send them that seven pound bass photo in that group text. Let's hop in. The fluke right here is one of my go-to lures in the fall, especially when bass are feeding on bait balls. When you're actively searching for bait fish, having this thing hooked up, ready to go, you're doing yourself a favor. Simply cast this bad boy past the disturbance and work your way back through to kind of mimic a stunned dying bait fish. Bass can't resist it. All right, what you're looking at here, these are deep creek lures. These are nice. I like the action on these. They're nice and soft. Uh, these two here is going to be the pearl and smoke uh, creme brand. You can get these typically at Walmart for really cheap. These are the five inch. And then this one right here, it's kind of a segmented tail. This is the razor shads, the deal color. And this is going to have, it's going to last a long time because of course it's made out of Z-Man's Elastec. Now a tip on the hook set, I would give this a good one 1000 before you set the hook. I think you'll find yourself pinning more bass if you just give it a little bit more time. And if you love the fluke bite, check out the donkey rig, which is essentially also known as the double fluke rig. Go check that out. I don't have a video on one. I should, probably should do that soon, but nonetheless, check out the donkey rig if you absolutely love the fluke. So the next lure I have for you, this guy right here, the old buzz bait. Now, as bass start to move into shallower waters, pulling this guy out, whenever you're around vegetation, the back of creek channels, and even around logs, this is going to produce some significant results for you. So there's a variety of different things you can do to your buzz bait. You can modify it by adding a trailer. As you can see, I have one on back here. Uh, you can remove the skirt to experiment. You can vary your retrieval speeds. You could burn it across the water. You could slow it down for a deeper, more enticing plop, 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 plop. I know this guy right here for sure. This is a 3 8 ounce uh, hammer buzz bait. Uh, this was in collaboration with Ketchco, but this is a Guggen Squad bait. Um, this one is interesting. So this is a Thunderhawk and it's going to have that swivel in the back. That frog is just going to sit there. His legs are going to go crazy and that'll get bit. I'm not sure what these guys are. Um, a lot smaller, lighter weight. And this guy right here, as you can see, it's kind of swiveled. I'm not sure who makes the lure, but I'm pretty sure this is a Biospawn Exoswim um, trailer. I've caught a lot of fish on this. And also, I'll throw this on a swim jig. So that is a juicy color around here in Ohio. All right, so the rod I'm throwing the old buzz baits on, this is gonna be a 7.2 to 7.6 heavy powered rod. Um, the reel, the gear ratio, I'm gonna want this going slower than typically. So it's probably gonna be a 6.1 and maybe a 7.1 where I can slow it down. All right, so the line, you want this to stay on top of the water column. So since fluorocarbon sinks, you're either going to use mono or braid. I would highly recommend using braid. You can usually get away with a 40 to 50 pound braided line. I'll throw my favorite braid down in the links below, but that is going to be the setup for you for the buzz bait. Now you can put all kinds of trailers on the back of your buzz baits. I am first and foremost going to be trying out my swim bait. I like the uh, Exo Swim. I particularly like the Strike King. I think they're Rage Swimmers. Um, the KVD Magic Color or a Ghost Shad. And of course you can also put some type of frog. Now I recently got these I'll definitely be using them. These are Stanley ribbit frogs. And so these things will kind of flutter nicely with those big fat tails on the back of their legs. So look forward to throwing that. Anybody knows who cat this is? It's not mine. It's not mine. Oh, is yours not my kitty? No. It's actually not my cat, somebody else's cat, but it hangs out with me all the time. All right guys, next we have the old spinner baits. Now these are perfect for mimicking the larger bait fish in the fall. You simply, what you do is they adjust the size and blade type based on the water temperature and how deep you are fishing. So double willow leaf blades, these work really well in the early fall. Um, these bait fish are still a little bit smaller. Now, while combination of the willow and Colorado blade is effective as the season progresses. And so this is gonna be your Colorado blade. It's going to slow it down a bit. And so these are nice as you get into the middle of fall. Now in colder water, I'm going to switch to a double Colorado blade for a slower, more vibration heavy presentation when those bass get really lazy. Now this is an absolute monster. It doesn't matter. This, this is a huge willow leaf and a huge Colorado blade. So if you have perch in your area, I still have yet to catch one, but I'm going to be breaking out this monstrosity. This thing's, I mean, 
three quarter of an ounce, maybe an ounce. So look forward to getting something to chomp on this. So the rod reel line setup, I'm gonna need a rod to fish the spinner baits. Probably a 7.2 to 7.4 is where I like it. It's gonna have to have a little bit of backbone to set the hook past the barb. Uh, for the line, I'm gonna use straight fluorocarbon, um, 17 pound. Uh, I use Seaguar and Vizex, I like it a lot. And then the reel, I'm gonna basically use a slower reel to be kind of moving this through the water. So somewhere in the six to seven to one range is where I am fishing the spinner baits. Now, if you're getting short strikes, you'll know that because everything, you feel it, and then you get it back, the tail's ripped off. Um, try putting on a trailer hook. You can kind of see one on here. Got a trailer hook on the back of this. And potentially you could do the same on your buzz baits. If you're getting short strikes, try putting a trailer hook on there. I love putting trailer hooks on. I know some people are like, hey, I never do it, but I do, and I constantly are catching fish with my second trailer hook. So lure number four I have for you is going to be the lipless crankbait. These are two customs that someone just sent me, so look forward to put some trapper hooks on those. I'm typically fishing with the Straight King Red-Eyed Shad. This is my go-to. However, I've been falling in love with another lure, this guy right here. I found it, I got caught up in a bunch of line and this thing was caught up into that. Cut it out, a few casts later, caught myself a nice 19. This is gonna be a three quarter ounce Berkeley War Pick. All right, so usually I'm fishing these guys when the water temps drop to 50 to 60 degrees, it's really prime time for the lipless crankbait. It's ideal for targeting bass, feeding on bait fish, specifically those bait fish that you see suspended below the surface at quite a distance. Simply work it through the grassy areas, rip it free from the vegetation and trigger those reaction bites. So what I like to do is I like to throw this out, let it sink all the way to the bottom and then work it along to bottom. I know it's kind of crazy. I get it hooked up a lot. So I typically don't fish them in water deeper than what I can reach my pole down there and kind of get it free with. But nonetheless, this guy right here, I like it. So uh, how I would typically fish this, uh, you're gonna need a beefier setup. I'd try like a 12 pound fluorocarbon with a bait caster in the six to one gear ratio range. However, if you're throwing a three quarter inch like this Berkeley War Pig right here, uh, I know that when I caught that 19 incher, this was on 20 pound fluorocarbon on my jig rod. All right, the next lure I have for you is the square bill crankbait. I was using it yesterday. Let's go ahead and grab this thing. All right, let me grab it. Here we go. There we go. This is the Pearl Ghost. This thing is nice. This thing has caught me probably 70 plus bass. I'm surprised it's still in one piece. So this lure is going to excel a lot in shallow water, bouncing it off every piece of cover that you can find, lay down logs, stumps, stones, whatever you can get. If you're getting this thing caught up, you're fishing it correctly. I know a lot of people like to break this guy out whenever they see Rip Rap. It, it, just a fantastic bait, specifically going into October. So what I'm gonna be throwing the square bill crankbait on, I'm gonna be using 17 pound fluorocarbon uh, I'm going to use a gear ratio on the rod. It's going to be around six to one or seven to one. And then it's going to be a seven to three, kind of a medium, heavy, moderate action rod. So I run impulse rods. This is the energy series. And this is actually the crankbait chatterbait rod. So um, this has treated me very well. As you can see, got a chatterbait XO on it right now. And so I'll interchange my square bell and the chatterbait or whatever type of bladed jig I'm using to fish this boy. Now, what I typically do on a lot, if I don't like the lures or maybe the lures are a little cheaper, what I'll do is I will take trapper hooks, which I really like the trapper hooks because they're just sticky sharp. I know they're sticky sharp because I put one through my thumb um, <laughs> earlier in the season. Won't do that again. But nonetheless, I like to change up my hooks just to get that really sticky penetration and so I don't lose bass. And with this guy, I definitely have not. All right, let's move on to the next lure. All right, the next lure I have for you is this guy right here, the old jerk bait. Now these guys excel in cold water and especially if you see them suspended, this one's going all the way down to 12 feet. Cause look at the bill on that. I got another one here I'll talk about in a moment. This is from Bill Lewis. This is their scope stick, so we'll talk about that in a minute. But nonetheless, I love using these around deeper creek channels or when you see those suspended bait balls. The, the, the way that these mimic dying or weak or injured bait fish just make them absolutely irresistible for largemouth bass. And I just stuck that in my skin a little bit. That was fun. Pull that out. There we go. So what I like to do with these guys, I like to throw them near dredged out areas, right? Those bridges, a lot of times those underpasses, kind of working them in a slow, erratic motion really will trigger those strikes from bass lurking nearby. Uh, this is one I got recently. This is called the scope stick. They say it's um, designed for forward facing sonar. It's gonna have a, a really wide wobble because of that bill right there, which is going to flash 
especially at distance, is going to show up on your forward-facing sonar. At least that's what they say. Nonetheless, these guys will absolutely destroy it in October for you if you can locate and find where those bait balls are. All right, so the gear tips for this, I'm typically going to be throwing 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon on these. Um, six, eight, seven foot rod, maybe seven, three if it's a glass graphite composite casting rod. And the gear ratio for these guys, I'm going to be using anywhere from six, one to seven, one. Don't need to be pulling these in super, super fast. All right, so what I like in my jerk baits is a lot of these will float. And so I don't like it when they kind of do this. It just doesn't look incredibly natural for me. So I like the suspending jerk baits. You're going to get these down and it's going to rattle, 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 injured stop. And this is going to sit there. And that's when the bass will just come and freaking devour them. And so I personally like suspended jerk baits. So if you're out there looking, make sure you look for one that suits your needs. All right, let's move on. Right, next I have for you, oh, da, da. The Mega Bass Mag Draft. Guys, this is a winner when it comes to targeting big bass in the fall. This hard thumping tail sends vibrations to the water that just these big giant bass pick up on. And it's a through wire construction, right? So when you catch it, um, it's not going to be the bass, not going to be able to use the weight to kind of throw it because you're constantly keeping tension on that line. This right here. This is a behemoth, but I catch the majority, I think this is 10 inch, I catch the majority of my trophy size bass on the eight inch mag draft. So when everybody else in the fall is sizing down, I'm sizing up folks. So I'm gonna leave you with kind of a pick your own adventure. So I got two videos for you. One, I take a deep dive on how to fish the six, eight and 10 inch mag draft. You can check that out right there. And also I have every single lure that I have rigged up in September, also rigged up in October. So if you wonder what those are, you can check that video out right there. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you.